Okay, um, chapter one of physiology. So, hi, you guys, I'm back. All right, so let's, without further ado, let's go through physiology. Okay, so physiology is a much cooler thing than in microbiology, in my opinion. Um, so, let's, beginning. So, intro to physio. Okay, so you guys just all just took anatomy. And anatomy is a study of where the things in the body are, okay? Um, physiology is a study of biological function, okay? Um, how it actually works, okay? Uh, it's concerned with the normal. So physiology, for the most part, is concerned with the normal. Pathophys is concerned with the abnormal okay okay so it emphasizes mechanisms explains cause and effects and like everything else like all sciences is derived from scientific research and experiment experimentation okay okay uh pathophys okay um is abnormal okay Comparative physiology is the comparative difference between us and, and other apes and or us and other mammals and stuff like that, okay? Um, and it has aided the development of pharmaceutical drugs, right? So when we first come up with a drug, we don't, we don't you know, you automatically give it to humans. We give it to um, different animals first, starting with worms and flies and mice, um, and then Eventually, even sometimes uh, chimpanzees or, or other monkeys before giving it to humans, right? So, okay. okay. So the scientific method, um, the first thing is to make an observation, okay? So my flashlight doesn't work as an observation, okay? Uh, form a hypothesis. This hypothesis must be testable. This is actually harder to do than you, than you think. Uh, so for my hypothesis, uh, so the batteries are out, okay? That's a testable hypothesis. There are not testable hypotheses as well. Um, you know, my flashlight is, is inhabited by the spirit of, you know, my great ancestor who wants me to see, doesn't want me to see in the dark. It's, Hypothesis is just not actually testable, okay? Um, so your hypothesis has to be testable, okay? You have to be able to design and conduct experiments uh, or to make more observations, okay? And you analyze the data, right? So I change out the flat, the batteries, and if the batteries, I'm changing the batteries to make my flashlight turn on, then I'm pretty much done, okay? Um, if it doesn't turn on, then I have to come up with an alternative hypothesis. Okay, uh, the results must be replicated many times before a conclusion is accepted. Okay, um, you can't just do anything with an angle of one. That doesn't make any sense and no one will believe that. Okay, you have to do things many, 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 many times. Okay, uh, so several verified hypotheses might become a general theory. Okay, um, a good physiological research requires, okay, quantifiable measurements, okay, experimental group and control group. So you can't just say, um, we'll do this together um, in the first, our first meeting, okay, um, like what experimental group is, what a control group is, okay. Um, statistical analysis, review and publication for, from a peer-reviewed scientific journal, okay? Okay, so pharmaceuticals, uh, basic research is conducted for years before a drug is ever given to a person, okay? Um, research begins by studying the uh, chemicals in, in, in vitro, so in a culture dish, uh, depends on what we're studying. Unfortunately, you can't study COVID-19 in, in a culture dish, um, really. Um, next studies are done in animals, usually rats and mice, to see if the same effects occur, okay, and see if there are side effects, and they, they can 
correct for dosage effects and stuff like that. Okay, uh, so during for these trials, many my many rats and mice are genetically modified to be susceptible to particular diseases. Um, like like there are strains of mice that are really like you know, normally develop cancer in a year if you leave them alone. So you can treat them uh, for that year and see if they develop cancer in a year. Okay. Okay. So animal trials can take several years, especially if you if you're looking for survivorship, like um, mice live two or three years. So you have to wait till they all die and see if that changes their natural lifespan. Okay, um, so it can take several years to do. Okay, okay, phase of clinical trials. Uh, phase one, they test the drug on healthy uh, human volunteers, they test for effects, phase of passage, dosage, etc. Okay, uh, that's the drug goes to phase two. So the test is effectiveness on people with a particular disease, and then phase small group. Okay, uh, I think the numbers are less than 100 actually. Phase three, um, more people, both sexes, um, could, now they have more controls. So they have to have group age match groups, ethnicities, um, and et cetera, et cetera. Okay. And then after that, after phase three, phase three is an important step, right? So phase three is where that drug can be approved for treatment of something. Um, after that, then you go phase four, which is treatment of other things. So they already know this drug is safe for consumption. Um, and then phase four is just, oh, can it treat other cancers? Can it treat, you know, baldness, uh, can, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. Okay. Um, <clears throat> homeostasis, I'm sure you guys have heard of homeostasis in high school. Um, I'm sure I've mentioned anatomy, et cetera. Okay, so homeostasis is the constancy of the inter internal environment, okay? So if I ask you guys, what is the body temperature? Um, you guys would tell me it's 37 degrees, okay? It's not 98.7, not, we don't, we don't calculate in Fahrenheit. Um, it's all Celsius, so 37 degrees, okay? Um, okay, the main purpose of our physiological mechanism is to maintain homeostasis. It is to, it is to keep all our levels within this narrow bed, whether it's blood sugar levels, temperature levels, calcium levels, et cetera, et cetera, okay? It, we want to stay in this narrow bed. Okay, um, any change in homeostasis indicates disease. Okay, okay. Um, homeostasis is most often accomplished by something called a negative feedback loop. Okay, all right, so let's talk about negative feedback loop. Okay, so the temp your core temperature, okay, um, changes. Okay, so um, I'm gonna pick one of you guys who are in my class, Leslie. Um, so I'm gonna pick Leslie and we'll shove her in the freezer. Okay, so in that in a few minutes she's in the freezer, her body temperature will slowly decrease as she's in the freezer. Okay, so the sensors in the body will detect the change, okay, and send the, the information to the integration center, which is the brain, right? The brain. Um, integrate that data. So, okay, I'm getting cold, et cetera, et cetera. The, my body temperature is now below where my hypothalamus wants it to be. And then I have to go and send information to an effector. Okay. The effector can make appropriate adjustments to counter the change from the set point. Okay. So she'll start to shiver. Her muscles are an effector. Okay. Or her blood vessels will start to go like shut off near the surface of her skin, so we'll send the blood deeper, okay? Those are also effectors, okay? All right, so this is the opposite 
right? So this is what happens when it gets too, too hot, okay? Okay, usually you have two sets of things because you, you, you want to stay within the narrow band. Usually you have a, a mechanism that brings something down and a mechanism that brings something up, okay? Like blood sugar, you have insulin bring blood sugar down, you have glucagon bring blood sugar up. So they, they work against each other. Okay. Okay. So we always want to try to stay around the set point. We're not like it's not an absolute set point. Okay. It is not like you're half the you're half a degree off and you're screwed. It is a fluctuation. In fact, you are about half a degree warmer at night than you are during the day. Okay. Um, so. The small fluctuation doesn't matter, but once you tip past that, you, you come back down, okay? Okay, uh, quantitative measurements. Um, in order to study physiological mechanisms, scientists must measure specific values and mathematically determine their normal range, their averages, their standard deviations, okay, et cetera, et cetera, okay? So, um, you have to have a, a numbers, and those numbers has to be within ranges, okay? And so here you can see like everything is within a range. Um, so to just look at glucose, okay? So <clears throat> your normal glucose levels, okay? When you're fasting, like so, when you um, when you wake up. Okay, usually that's what they tell you to do, right? You measure blood glucose when you wake up. Your blood glucose when you wake up should be between 70 and 99 uh, mill <coughs> milligrams per 100 mils, or otherwise known as milligrams per deciliter, okay? Usually that's the, the when you look at a chart, and it's, it'll just say 70 or something, um, but the, the end part is MGDL milligram per deciliter, okay? Just because it was the way they used to measure in the past, that became solidified. And so everything here is milligram, milliliters per, per deciliter, milligram per deciliter, okay? Okay. Positive feedback is very different than negative feedback, okay? Positive feedback, the end product stimulates the process. So it actually, instead of returning it back to normal, it makes it bigger and bigger and bigger. It amplifies the signal, okay? Uh, a great example of this is childbirth, okay? Childbirth starts, okay, when the head of the child bangs against the uterus, okay? Uh, against the uh, cervix, okay? That banging against the cervix causes a release of oxytocin, okay? Oxytocin goes to the brain and causes the uterus to contract. More contraction, more banging, more banging, more oxytocin release. More oxytocin release, more contractions. That's why contractions get faster and faster and faster, okay? Um, usually there is a signal to stop it all. Like for, for example, when the baby comes through, no more banging, no more oxytocin release, no more contraction. Okay. All right. Uh, one second. I'll make sure it's recording. Okay. Um, regulations. Okay. A process within organs can occur in two different ways. One intrinsic inside the, the organ. Okay. Um, one's extrinsic, and that's usually uh, either the brain or another endocrine organ, um, pituitary, etc., um, regulates. Okay. 
Uh, all right. Uh, uh, hormones, okay, are secreted in re response to specific stimuli. For example, an uh, increase in blood sugar is it, uh, results in the uh, uh, release of insulin, okay? Um, usually it has its own negative feedback response, okay? Um, the increased blood sugar levels inhibits the release of insulin, okay? Um, because if you have too little blood sugar, you, you, you want to stop insulin from being released because you don't want to lower it any further. Because if you lower it too far, you can pass out and die. Um, another good example of this is thyroid hormone. Thyroid hormones in your blood inhibits the production of thyroid stimulating hormone, um, which then turns off thyroid hormone. So there's a mechanism to keep just right. Okay. Okay, so you can see that here. Okay, so the primary tissues. Okay, so here. Okay, um, a cell is made out of tissues. Tissues are made out of organs. Okay, oh, sorry. Cells make up tissues. Okay, tissues put together make organs. Organs together form organ systems. Organ systems together form organisms. Okay. Uh, okay. Wow, that was a big mistake. Okay, uh, the primary tissues. There are four types of tissues, muscle tissue, nervous tissue, epithelial tissue, and, connect and connective tissue. Okay, all right. So muscle tissue is specialized for contraction. Muscle tissue will always contract um, and respond to electric current. Okay, um, the three types of uh, muscles: skeletal muscle, cardiac muscle, okay, and smooth muscle. Okay, smooth muscle. or oh, sorry, skeletal muscle is voluntary. Okay, this is the only one of the three that is under conscious control. Okay, so I can pick and choose which muscles I want to contract. Okay, not all of them, okay, but most of them attach to bone. And like the way I'm moving my hand right here is because my muscles, okay, in my finger are attached to the bones of the finger. Okay. Okay, so. Um, these are muscle fibers, okay? They're, they're big, huge, multinucleate cells. They come from fusion of a whole bunch of things called myoblasts, okay? Um, okay. And they can produce a graded response. That means you can contract a little bit, you can contract a lot, you can try to contract incredible amounts. Like, it's not all or none. And we'll go over this concept of all or none very soon um, in, in the later chapters. Okay. okay. Um, cardiac muscle. Cardiac muscle is o um, only found in the heart. Okay. Um, the fibers are short, branched, and interconnected both physically and electrically. Okay, so let's see. So, okay, these are our heart Okay, this is cardiac muscle. You can tell this apart because they have these little things called intercalated discs. Intercalated discs have these holes in them called gap junctions that allow for the signal to travel through the heart very quickly. So when the heart beats, you don't want individual cells to beat on their own. You want the whole entire thing to beat <coughs> in rhythm. So boom, right? So the signal has to travel through all the cells nearly simultaneously. Okay. okay. <clears throat> okay. Uh, the 
control, contraction is involuntary. You can't consciously control your heartbeat. Okay. Um, you can consciously influence the rate of your heartbeat a little bit, but not to the point where you can go beat now. Okay. Okay. And the cardiac muscle, once it contracts, it fully contracts. There's no like half hearted thing. Okay, smooth muscle, okay? Um, smooth muscles, okay, uh, are going to be lining the walls of hollow organs, okay? Blood vessels, reproductive organs, digestive tract, okay? Like mostly when we look at skeletal muscle, we look at the digestive tract, okay? Smooth muscle is smooth, that means it's not striated, okay? And it, it, it's usually run in multiple layers. There are um, they run in different directions. Not that they're anti-parallel, they run in different directions. Okay. So smooth muscle. Okay, so nervous tissue. Nervous tissue is found in the brain, spinal cord, nerves. It's made of two things, neurons and neural ganglia. Okay, neurons conduct impulses. Okay, so they send electrical signals. Okay, um, they're very good at conducting an impulse, okay, but they're very bad at everything else. Okay, they cannot, the neurons literally cannot feed themselves. So they literally need these neural glia to support them, protect them, and feed them. And, and the, all, the, all the neurons actually do is like conduct nerve impulses. Okay. So this big huge thing is a neuron. So a neuron has the cell body, which is a big blob in the middle. The longest thing coming off the neuron is the axon, and then the others are the dendrites. Okay. So dendrites receive information, axon sends out information. Okay. All right, um, okay, um, epithelial tissue, okay? Epithelium covers the surface of everything, okay? It is the interaction surface, it, like, so it covers not only the surface of your body, but the surface of any organ, okay? Um, any type of interaction occurs at the epithelial surface. Okay, uh, epithelium. Okay, um, are classified first by two things. One is the number of layers. Okay, so one layer, simple, more than one layer, stratified. Okay. Okay, uh, simple, simple epithelium is always for transport of substances. Stratified layers, multiple layers are for protection, okay? So, the second term that implies epithelial tissue is the shape of the cell, okay? So if you have a square cell, normal type cell is square, those are cuboidal. If you take that cell and you flatten it, then it becomes squamous, okay? Squamous cells allow things to come through them much faster, but they're not as good at producing things, okay? Columnar cells make more stuff, but they're not very good at allowing things to pass through them, okay? Okay. Okay, so here you can read these by yourself, uh, this chart of what they do, okay? So simple squamous epithelium, always for diffusion. Really thin membrane, diffusion occurs very quickly. Okay. Um, alveoli of the lungs, in the kidneys, okay, uh, in, the, in the first layer of blood vessels, like simple squamous epithelium, 
for diffusion. Okay, very little actual material, so it's very easily damaged, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Okay. Okay. Simple cuboidal secretion. Okay. Simple columnar absorption. Okay. See that there. Okay. Stratified uh, epithelial tissue. Okay. Uh, so these guys are held together by intercellular junctions, collectively known as uh, junctional processes. Okay. So stratified epithelium is for protection. So one of the things for protection is you, if you, if you're have a bunch of cells that are for protection, the best way to get around that is to go between the cells. Okay, so to combat that, the cells are linked together, physically linked together um, by these intercellular junctions. Okay. Okay, the stratified epithelial tissue has two types, non-keratinized and keratinized. Okay, the keratinized cells have keratin. Okay, keratin, uh, keratinized epithelium is always dead on the surface. Okay, they, it, the cells basically make so much keratin that everything else just goes away and it just becomes a sack of keratin and, and uh, lipid on the outside. Okay, keratin is water resistant. So the water can't get in, like can't go through my head and go into my body. Okay. The cells on the surface are all dead, so viruses that land on the surface of my head, they don't get into my body either, which is actually very important. Okay. Um, epithelium. Um, the non-keratinized membranes have living cells on all layers. This you need a wet surface. So the difference between keratinized and non-keratinized is wet and dry. Okay, keratinized, dry. Okay, non-keratinized, wet. Okay, so when they, you know, you get a DNA swab and stuff, they, they need to go inside and get non-keratinized membrane cells. Okay, because they're still alive. Okay. Okay. Okay, exocrine glands. Exo out. Okay, so exocrine glands go to the outside, and to go to the outside, they're transported by ducts. Okay, um, so I'm not sure if um, Dr. Pula went through this with you, but the inside of you, the very inside of you, is actually outside the body. Okay, so like your stomach lining is considered the outside, not the inside. Okay, so the exocrine go to the outside. Okay. Okay. Um, <clears throat> sweat glands. Okay. Um, sweat glands, there's two types of sweat glands, exocrine sweat glands. Um, these produce a salty sweat, which is basically water, salt, and a little bit of urea. Okay, and those are involved in keeping you cool. Okay, uh, <clears throat> the apocrine sweat glands. Apocrine sweat glands, okay, are produced in two areas the armpit um, and, and groin area, okay, which is why um, they not only produce normal sweat, but they also produce a protein and fat rich sweat. Um, this is what bacteria feed on. So there's a lot of bacteria in that region. Okay, the bacteria also eat that stuff, right? And they produce byproducts which smell, which is why your armpit and your groin smell worse than the other parts of your body. That's where the body odor comes from. Okay. Okay, endocrine inside the body, endocrine glands, okay, secrete into the bloodstream, okay? And so um, we'll talk about that in, in chapter 11, okay?
Okay. Okay. Those first three groups are dominated by cells. Okay. Um, like they're all cells, basically. Connective tissue is not. Okay. Uh, connective tissue is characterized by the extracellular matrix. Okay. The matrix around the cells. Okay, uh, there are four major categories, CT proper, okay, uh, cartilage, bone, and blood. Okay. So let's talk about it, okay. CT proper um, is composed of protein fibers and ground substance, okay. Uh, ground substance is extracellular matrix without the fibers running through it, okay. Um, it's just, Kind of gooey, jelloy, jello like thing. Okay. Um, the subtypes loose index. Okay. So loose, okay, connective tissue has a lot of empty space. Okay. So the collagen fibers are loosely connected that has room for blood vessels and nerves and all this other stuff to run through. And they also have space. For cells and stuff to come out of and crawl through. Okay, um, when you look at this is loose. Okay, you can see there's a lot of empty space. Okay, so white blood cells. Okay, like these guys here um, can crawl through them and move through them. The dense is full of fibers. Okay. These are not, most of this is not cells. There's maybe one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There's eight cells in that picture. The rest of it is all fibers that you see running through, okay? But very little empty space, okay? So the difference between loose and dense is empty space, okay? The difference between dense, and they all have a picture of dense irregular. Um, The living between dense regular and dense irregular is the pattern. Dense regular, everything runs in the same direction. Okay? So tendons and ligaments. Okay? A tendon, you know a tendon will be stretched in which direction. So all the fibers will run in a direction that helps the stretch. Okay? Um, same with the ligament. Dense irregular, like the lower layer of the dermis, you don't know which way the skin will be rubbed any particular day. So what you want is you need the pattern to be irregular, and so you have fibers running in every single direction. And if you have fibers running in every single direction, they provide support in every single direction. They just don't provide a whole lot of it. Okay. Adipose tissue. Okay, adipose tissues or fat. Okay. Okay. Cartilage. Okay. Uh, cartilage is composed of tissues uh, cells called chondrocytes. Okay. Surrounded by a semi-solid ground substance. Okay. Um, so our first skeleton is originally cartilage. Okay, um, and eventually that turns into the bone. Okay, um, but our first fetal skeleton is made out of cartilage, and still a little bit of remains. So the joints themselves are actually made out of cartilage. Okay, so the soft, squishy layer. Okay. 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 Um, bone. Is made from osteoblasts that trap min mineral salts, okay, uh, forming concentric layers of calcified material, okay. The concentric layers are called the mele, um, around the canal, that canal is called central canal or herversion canal, okay. And once the cells harden, they turn into osteocytes, okay, and live in little spaces called the cuvee, okay. So, 
this is compact bone right here. Okay, so you can always tell bone apart. It's this tree ring like structure. Okay, this is a tooth. Okay. So the tooth, especially the enamel, is harder than actual bone. And so you can um, chew bone if you really want to. Not that you should. Okay. Okay, an organ is composed of tissues, okay, two or more tissues that serve different functions in the, in the organ, okay? Okay, so the skin is the largest organ in the body, okay, the three layers to the skin, epidermis, dermis, and hypodermis. Okay. Uh, stem cells, okay, uh, tissue development. So uh, I'm not sure if he co um, Don Fuller covered this in anatomy. I'm guessing probably not. Um, but you come from three layers of tissue. When you develop, the first thing that forms is something that has three layers of tissue. An ectoderm on the out top layer, okay, a mesoderm, and then an endoderm, okay. Ecto outside, endo, inside, meso, in the middle. Okay? Okay. So types of stem cells. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Zygotes are totally potent. Okay? Totally potent means that they can come into any type of cell. Okay, that includes making the embryo, and that includes making the extra embryonic tissue, like the placenta. Okay, once they start to differentiate, they turn into embryonic stem cells. Okay, embryonic stem cells are pluripotent, which means they can form any cell that's in the embryo. They're no longer capable of forming like placenta, but they are, they are forming, capable of forming any cell in the embryo. Okay, so this is why like you want to save embryonic stem cells and stuff. You want to save uh, those like the, the placenta or, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, after, after that, those embryonic stem cells turn into adult stem cells. Adult stem cells um, are limited in the range that they can turn into. Like uh, you have muscle stem cells that can turn into muscle, brain stem cells, which can turn into uh, neurons and stuff. Okay. But they are multipotent. So the, the biggest thing is. Um, Protein potent, then pluripotent, then multipotent. Okay. All right. Organs. Okay. Organs provide perform related functions and group the systems. So here are the systems. All right. Last topic for this chapter. Okay. Uh, the intracellular space, okay, extracellular, sorry, not space, uh, that's the mother chapter, fluid, okay, so extracellular or intracellular fluid is 65%, extracellular fluid is 35%, okay, the extracellular fluid is actually separated into two fluids, which is the interstitial fluid, the fluid around the cells themselves, and the plasma of the blood. Okay, and they're slightly different from one another. Okay, all right. Um, I hope you guys understood all that. Okay, recording.